So today I wanted to film a video that I don't film very often, but I have acquired some books uh, throughout the past three months. In June I had my birthday, so I received some gifts, and in the beginning of August I went to London with my friends, so I also bought some books. So let's start with the books I got for my birthday. I feel like this year the theme was translated Asian fiction, specifically Japanese and Korean. So my friend Marta got me Strange Weather in Tokyo by Hiromi Kawakami and my friend Erin got me two books, Sweet Bean Paste by Durian Sukagawa, which I mentioned in my previous video because I really like the cover, and Shoko Smile by Choi Eng Young. This one, Strange Weather in Tokyo, I already read. This is the only book from this book haul that I've read already. And it was alright. <laughs> I, I give it three stars. Um, it's about this woman who is actually in her 30s, she's 38 I believe, who is drinking in this bar in the beginning of the book and she meets her teacher from high school I believe and they kind of reconnect and start this friendship and later even something else. So at first I was a little bit uncomfortable because yes there is a gauge age gap because um, the main character is 38. She mentions uh, she's in her late 40s and the sensei as she calls him is um, in his 60s. But the weird thing is that the main character kind of reads younger than that so in the beginning I actually thought she was in her like early 20s so I was a bit uncomfortable. I mean I was a bit uncomfortable throughout this whole book because Aside from the age gap, like he used to be her teacher, even though like back in the day they were not like involved at all. He was just her teacher, but I don't know. There's this weird like power dynamic even in the like present day because she still calls him sensei and he kind of still treats her as a student. So I was like, okay, <laughs> I was like, I don't, I don't know. But I still quite enjoyed it. I really liked the descriptions of food. There's so many here. And I still found it quite charming and very atmospheric. So I ended up giving it three stars. Okay, sweet bean paste. Uh, oh, I forgot to put a disclaimer that I normally don't really read descriptions of the books, like synopsis, the, the back of the book, because I prefer going into my books blind. So aside from the book that I just mentioned that I already read, you're not going to uh, find out really, you know, what the books are about. <laughs> most of the time. Just like with this one, Sweet Bean Paste, I have no idea what this is about. It looks very pretty. I'm guessing there are going to be food descriptions here too because it's called Sweet Bean Paste. But yeah, I got it from my friend Erin. And another one that I got from her was Shoko's Smile, which is a collection of short stories. So like from the beginning, I can't really tell you much about this uh, collection because it's short stories. But it says the best-selling story collection from South Korea's brightest literary star, which is interesting because I haven't heard anything about this book before. And even on Goodreads, it says like very popular, like debut, uh, literally star. And I'm just like, really? And it, I find it interesting because recently I watched this video of this girl like reading Japanese fiction and she is Japanese but uh, the video was in English and she at the end of the video made this interesting commentary of like what's popular when it comes to like translated Japanese fiction like in the West compared to which authors are popular in Japan so maybe this is popular in Korea I haven't heard much about it but I'm excited. <laughs> then we have Concerning My Daughter by Kim Hyejin Translated by Jamie Chang. Maybe I should tell you who translated those books. Oh, okay. Real quick. Shoko's Smile was translated by Sang Ryu. Strange Weather in Tokyo was translated by Alison Markin Powell. The translators should be on the cover, shouldn't they? And Sweet Bean Paste was translated by Alison Watts. Okay, so <laughs> coming back to Concerning My Daughter. Uh, this book is... okay, I only know that this is uh, written um, from the perspective of a mother, South Korean mother in the modern day, whose daughter is a lesbian. That's all I know. This was uh, translated, like, the translation came out this year, I believe, yes, 2022, but it came out in 2017, so I really like the cover. Next we have Cold Enough for Snow by Jessica Au. This isn't translated, but I do believe it's about mother and daughter who are traveling to Japan, Tokyo specifically, I think, and this is, I would assume, a novella because I don't think it's even, yeah. 700 pages long. It's 94 pages. I've heard some really good things so far about this book. In those videos of like 
my favorite books of 2022 so far. This appeared in like two or three that I've watched, so uh, really excited. I, I'm assuming this is going to be a good kind of autumnal read because it's called Cold Enough for Snow. So I hope I will read this in a month or two. Then we have Pizza Girl by Jin Kyung Fraser. Frazier? I'm not sure. I, while I was in London, I visited this bookstore and I mostly wanted to visit like used bookstores, like uh, second-hand bookshops, because I'm just like, I can buy full price books on online anyway, so I wanted to find something. I wanted to find cheap books, <laughs> because that's who I am as a person. And this one, actually, uh, it wasn't a second-hand bookshop, but it was on sale, kind of, I think, because uh, normally this was 8 99 so nine pounds, and at the time when I visited it was 3 99 so four pounds, so so I paid less than half and I've only heard like one or maybe two people talking about this book but I know it's about a girl who is pregnant, she's 18 years old and she works as a pizza delivery girl and it gives off very much like messy, dysfunctional young woman vibes <laughs> and yeah, that's all I have, pizza girl. Then I'm going to briefly mention the place I found Endgame and Act Without Words by Samuel Beckett. Like it won a Nobel Prize. I think its most famous work is Waiting for Godot, which I've seen but I haven't read. I remember leaving the, the theater and being like, what did I just watch? <laughs> but in a like thought-provoking way <laughs> at least. So I don't know anything about Endgame but I think it's like his second most popular book. Play, sorry. Actually, I remember I like the Goodreads description because it doesn't like tell you anything actually but uh, pulls you in a bit, so let me read it out for you. Endgame, originally written in French and translated into English by Beckett himself, is now considered by many critics to be his greatest single work. A pinnacle of Beckett's characteristic raw minimalism, it is a pure and devastating distillation of the human essence in the face of approaching death. <laughs> So it's gonna be fun, I can tell. Endgame is actually, yeah, a play in one act. And the second thing, which is act without words, isn't actually a play, I don't know what I would call it, but it's a mime for one player. But it's only a few pages long. It's like, miming? I don't, I don't know what it would look like, but yeah. Excited. And the second play that I got is The Tempest by Shakespeare. I actually watched The Tempest when I was in London in the Globe uh, Theatre, Shakespeare's Globe. Uh, I only wanted to visit Shakespeare's Globe because I heard about it during my kind of class about Shakespeare's adaptations. Uh, I heard a lot about this place um, and <laughs> it was an interesting adaptation. I haven't read the play before so so I can't really compare it to the source material. We got the standing t tickets, my friend and I, for eight pounds and we stood for two and a half hours. <laughs> Uh, there was an intermission and during the intermission we just like collapsed on the ground. <laughs> but yeah, I went to... which bookstore was it? Uh, I got it used in London actually. Uh, both of those places I actually got used in London. In Jad Books. And in this bookstore they had quite a, quite a big selection of place. And I wanted to buy The Tempest to have this as like a remembrance of like the fact that I watched the Tempest in London and I also, you know, bought the display in London. Does it make, make sense? I don't know. Uh, and I was looking for it and I couldn't find it. And as I was about to leave, I saw one book that was kind of backwards, like the spine was backwards and I was just like, okay, I have to, I have to like turn it back <laughs> because I'm someone, when I'm in a bookstore and like the books are a little bit disorganized, like not aligned very well, I just like <laughs> organize them as I, I walk past because, I don't know, I have to. <laughs> So I, I pulled it out and I saw it was The Tempest. So I thought, this is fate. So I bought it. And the last few books are classics slash modern classics. We have Fathers and Sons by Ivan Turgenev. Don't know anything about the plot of this book, but I have this book on my 10 classics I want to read in 2022. And uh, yeah, this is probably the last one that's like relatively short. Uh, all the other books are like bricks, so are like 800 pages long. So <laughs> I would like to get to this one at least. We have, oh, I don't know how to pronounce that. De Demian? Demian. Demian? <laughs> I don't know. By Hermann Hesse. I don't know anything about this book, but I've heard some good things recently. Jennifer 
Jen, I don't remember her channel name, but she like really praised this book that it's like very well, well written, kind of philosophical, so really excited about this one. And we have No Longer Human by Osamu Danzai, which is a Japanese um, classic, modern classic. When was this? I think it was published in 1949, so a modern classic. This book... I've heard about this book when I was reading Confessions of a Mask. Uh, I started reading the reviews and so many people were like, Confessions of a Mask is just like a worse version of this book. And since I didn't really like Confessions of a Mask, I've decided to read this one, since apparently this is a better version of that story. Yeah, that's all I have. <laughs> And lastly, actually, there's a book that I ordered online, but it didn't come yet, but I would like to mention it. It's called Briefly A Delicious Life, and I, I've i heard about this book and I kept confusing it with woman eating because the covers are, are very similar. But I saw this book in a bookstore in London and I just, I, I really like the cover, so I just like kids started like reading the premise and it's like historical fiction about a ghost and somehow also about Chopin and George Sand and like I don't want to know anything else that sounds amazing and I read like a few sentences here and there and I really like the writing style but it was a new book it was a uh, hardcover so it was a bit expensive so I've decided not to buy it but then I kept thinking about it and on the last day my friend Erin already left so I had like a whole day of to myself and I visited some bookstores and I've decided that I'm going to buy this book because I actually had some money left and I was like okay I keep thinking about this book I'm going to buy it I'm going to splurge on it and I couldn't find it <laughs> Yeah, I, I went to like two different Waterstones, is that what it's called? Yeah, couldn't find it, so I left very uh, disappointed and I came back to Poland and just ordered it online. I couldn't really find uh, a paperback. I found the paperback on like one website, but the shipping was expensive so I, I didn't buy it. But I also realized that the paperback was the same price as the hardback, so I was like, you know what, I'm just going to buy the hardback. So it didn't arrive just yet, I ordered it like last week and I ordered it from Book Depository, so it takes some time to get to Poland. So yeah, it will probably come next week, very excited, love the cover, I hope to read it soon. <laughs> So yeah, that's everything. It's quite a lot of books, but uh, it's a collective book haul, okay? Three months, I have my birthday, I went to London. It's a lot, but it's fine. Hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!